ierakstīšana notiek. Lūdzu, varam sākt. Jā, labrīt visi daudzi interesanti. Man liels prieks, ka mūsu projekts ir pievērst tik lielu cilvēku, tik lielu skaitu cilvēku uzmanību. Jāteic, projekts jau tiek īstenos trīs gadus, un mēs daudz arī, kas esam šeit klāt, nevēl esam arī vairākas reizes jau tikušies, un man par to liels prieks. Interesa Latvijā ir milzīgi liela, un kā zinām, tas ir statautiskas projekts arī Igaunijā, Lietuvā, Somijā un Zviedrijā par mūsu projektu daudz jau zina, un mēs jau arī plānojam par to, kā varētu turpināt šajā projektā uzsākt tās lietas arī ar kādu citu projektu nākotnē. Man ir arī liels prieks, ka tikko arī ir ieslēdz savu bildu mūsu uzēdzinātais eksperts, Tonis Kesimegi, kas ar savu burvīgo ideju Mūsu viss ir tiešām pārliecinājis, ka ir dažāda veida un jādomā ir plašāk ābas robežām un ābas varbūt tradīcijām un kā ir pieņemts. Un tādēļ es arī aicināšu viņu ar savu prezentāciju, bet tā kā mums ir vies arī no citām valstīm, tad maz īsti tūkojumi no manas puses. Tā ir, nezinu, ka tā varbūt ir tagad izaicinājumi, bija ļoti kašs teksts. Daina? Jā, es nedzirdēju. Ā. Manu tā kā man nedzirdēja. Kā lūdzu? Vai to, ko es pateicu, nedzirdēju? Dzirdēju. Es domāju, igauņiem pāris teikumos tā kā ievadu un lūdzu pārtūpā. Es tobrīd runāju ar saviem cilvēkiem, vai tu vari pati varbūt pateikt tam viski pienāk. Ok, special hello for all our participants from other countries. I know that there are some from Estonia, some from Lithuania, some from Finland and even some from Sweden probably. And so hello everybody, nice to see you here. Kulno was writing me that there are even 20 people in Estonia sitting in one seminar room. So we are very happy to have you all in our uh, uh, project. And of course, we hope that we will also have uh, uh, some next projects in the future. And now I'm happy to present you our, our nice and uh, very clever expert from Estonia, Thomas Kesemegi. Uh, he's here. And now I give microphone to him. Hi, my name is Tönis and I'm from Estonia, from a little island called Hiyuma. So, good morning Latvia, we can start now. I will speak about a little bit about those two houses which we built to Latvia. And I heard that people are very pleaseful to have them here and they were interested about hearing more about this subject. So I will tell you next about two hours how I came to this idea and uh, which is all about. So let's start. Can you see the uh, file here, which I will scroll down? Yeah? Yes, we see. Very good. Everything is fine. And uh, I think, uh, Rainis, can you help us to start with the first uh, video? Then I can explain what is it and um, what it's all about. This solar house video. So I, I assume everyone can see this now. Let's have the video. In our fast developing world, sustainability and renewable energy are the terms we're longing for. But the houses built for living can remain costly by both energy and money wise. We build good homes out of great mother materials. 
but the whole concept of how we think of the house can be so much more. Engineer Dean Scott Hammond dreamed of a house that could join in with the nature gently. A house that could completely fulfill its energy needs and be able to function off the grid. As sun provides enormous amounts of energy daily, solar panels are a great way to get renewable energy and to push this world towards a more sustainable path. Landholder Solar House is a new living concept of a house that can function solely on solar power, is easy and fast to build, and can hold energy for days, where everything is designed to be functional and sustainable. The house is defined by two shapes, the sphere and the prism. The sphere section holds the living room and bedroom, which are arranged in an open studio style, while the prism contains maintenance rooms. Designing the interior, ideas were lent from boat construction, where interiors are designed highly space efficiently, and opera theaters, where all needs to be set up time conveniently. The interior was designed for optimal room partitioning. Technology of this particular prototype can be used to make different scales and variations of solar houses. Active house means that the house regulates itself knows when to turn in cooling and can be programmed to cool down by opening the windows. When some of the electricity remains unused, it can be sold back to the power company. Also, the house is controllable through internet. To decrease the negative effect on the environment, the house is built on screw piles instead of foundation. Distincting from the traditional house, the nature remains untouched because no infrastructural elements will be placed. This, and the possibility to live off-grid, affords the owner to build a house to places it would not have been possible before. And the construction is carried out in a period of one month only. Houses like this could be a game-changer in our world, being a big leap in which you could be a part of. As to this day, we have used our own personal funds to evoke this prototype into existence. But since more and more people have become interested, we would like to get this house production ready. The prototype has gone through testing and is ready to take the next step. Therefore, if you are willing, you can choose to pledge. Or help us by letting others know of this high aiming project by sharing this video. Thank you for watching our video. And now the second video, right? No, let, let me say some words. Thank you, Ravis. Can I go back to this file? You, you will need to sh click share. Okay. Quick share. This one. Yes, okay. So, uh, I can say that this uh, triangular house we will talk about today was started from the roundhouse, which I made 11 years ago already, and it stands in Hiuma in this island and it still works very good. And I think it's very good house, but uh, there was only one problem to produce them. It needs uh, two uh, sophisticated personnel to uh, make those houses. And it's uh, quite expensive also. So I thought uh, two years ago to invent a new one, which is as cheap as uh, possible and simple and still can produce energy. Now I'm talking a little bit about solar panels basics to understand that uh, solar panels uh, and solar itself is, uh, in my opinion, better way to make um, electricity than, for example, uh, wind. 
and the amount of sunlight that strikes the Earth's surface in a whole hour and a half is an, enough to handle the entire world's energy consumption for a full year. Solar technologies convert sunlight into electrical energy through photovoltaic panels. This energy can be used to generate electricity or be stored in batteries or thermal storage. Stolar radiation is light, also known as electromagnetic radiation that is emitted by the sun. While every location on Earth receives some sunlight over a year, the amount of solar radiation that reaches any one spot on the Earth's surf surface varies. Solar technologies capture this radiation and turn it into useful forms of energy. When the sun shines onto a solar panel, energy from the sunlight is absorbed by the cells in the panel, which creates an electric field across the layers and causes electricity to flow. Solar panels consist of solar cells that are strung together, make a module. And when modules are connected, they make a solar system or installation. How solar cell works? Solar cells contain a material that conducts electricity only when energy is provided by, by sunlight, in this case. This material is called a semiconductor. The semi means its electrical conductivity is less than that of the metal, but more than an insulators. When the semiconductor is exposed to sunlight, it absorbs the light, transferring the energy to negatively ch charged particles called electrons. The electrons flow through the semiconductor as electrical current because other layers of the PV cell are designed to extract the current from the semiconductor. Then the current flows through metal contacts the grid-like lines on solar cell before it travels to an inverter. A modulus ability to convert sunlight into electricity depends on the semiconductor. Outside, env environmental conditions like hurt, dirt, and shade can reduce conversion e efficiency along with other factors. We have uh, some different uh, solution to use this uh, produced uh, energy by sun. And basically, there are three different solutions. Uh, probably the easiest way is on-grid on solution. On-grid solar energy system is connected to the utility grid. It's useful to increase your electric consumption costs when you are near to grid and you have possibility to use it. Advantage is cheapness because electric system does not consist batteries, which are quite expensive. We use this system also here in Latvia for those two houses we have built. Off-grid solution. One of the main types of the solar power system is off-grid. It works by generating electricity from solar panels and using it to charge or a solar battery via a charger controller. That electricity is then converted using an inverter so that it can power the home or business appliances. By saving the electricity in solar battery, it's possible to run home with solar energy even at night or during times when there is less sun exposure. So I talked briefly uh, from components. Solar panel itself, the precise size and production capabilities of individual solar panel array, which is the first ingredient, will depend on the amount of available sunlight in region, the usable space of roof, and energy consumption needs. And it may, may also be needed uh, alternative energy source. This is needed during the death of winter when solar production is at its lowest. 
Many owners who use off-grid system combine them with a generator that can power homes electric needs. Now, we can say that uh, if we put solar panels to your roof, the next step and the heart of the system is inverter. And there are different types of inverters. The inverter converts the direct current to an alternating, alternating current which flows into the electric grid and eventually connects to the cir circuit that is your home's electrical system. As long as sunlight continues to re reach the module and the circuit is connected, electricity will continue to be generated. Uh, as I know, the solar panels, they make uh, current, direct current. But in, uh, in your home, we mainly use alternating current. And also the, the voltage is uh, quite different. So we have three, basically three types of um, inverters. One of them is on-grid inverter. If you have a grid connection, that means all the sun energy, which produces uh, electricity, uh, goes to the grid. And we can um, use it in our homes as much as we need, and the rest of it goes to the grid. Off-grid inverter is very useful if you don't have grid. And uh, the electric lines will be cost very much if you want to um, put your house or business someplace where this, there is no electricity. For example, uh, we, we made one uh, solution in Estonia, in the countryside where electric company needs to put a uh, new line, which is uh, two kilometers long, and uh, the cost of the line was like 80, 80,000 euros, but uh, we made uh, them uh, off-grid solution, which is very, very reliable off-grid solution. It, and with extra um, energy generator and batteries, and it costs only like 25,000 euros. So it was uh, like three times uh, cheaper than just, just wires. And uh, the third system of inverters is low voltage off-grid system. That means we don't invert the voltage to the normal 200 volt, 40 volts, but we stay in like 12, 24 and, or 48 volts, which means that we have to use we have to use battery charger only and battery manager, which controls uh, the charging. The system is cheap, but needs all special equipment. You need special lightning, fridge, for example, TV set, heating, which are working like in your car, like 12 or 24 volts. And even wires must be thicker because in low voltage current is much bigger in the case of the same power. A uh, few words about batteries. A solar battery is needed to allow home to continue to run, run after the sun goes down. Solar storage device will charge throughout the day as solar panels generate excess electricity. Rather than simply losing out on all of that available solar power, a battery enables to keep it for later use. Depending on energy needs, a single battery or even a battery bank is used. Solar charge controller. The solar charge controller or battery charger is essential to save battery. The controller regulates the voltage and current that solar battery receives to prevent overcharging and damage. Some uh, types which are mostly used um, in solar systems are acid batteries, which are 
very similar to those batteries we are using in cars, and they are cheap. They are heavy. Uh, they are not uh, lasting so long, but they are like two times cheaper than the other options. Then um, I used lithium ion batteries and salt water battery as well. And you can collect different voltage batteries using uh, various number of elements. Every battery consists of units which voltage is uh, 1.3 to 1.7 volts. Average is uh, 1.5. Uh, that means the battery system is like this uh, low voltage off grid system, always 12, 24, or 48 and uh, inverter is uh, have to change it to 240 40 volts so this is one picture and here is uh, some uh, explaining graphics uh, which are different of off-grid and on-grid. You know, I, I just repeat it. An off-grid solar energy system is not connected to the utility grid, whereas on-grid solar energy system is connected to the grid. Your choice of an off-grid system or on-grid system will determine your access to electricity. What equipment is needed for access production, what happens when the grid goes down and how you build your electricity. I hope you can see those both pictures. Okay, on the screen. And the difference uh, on off-grid and on-grid systems, they are different inverters. And off-grid system uh, usually consists uh, uh, batteries and uh, extra energy generator because uh, if you want to be sure that you have electricity every moment of the year you you might need it and on grid uh, system you have to add a utility meter which is uh, you have usually in your home when you buy electricity from company, but in this case, utility meter works two ways. A sell and buy regime. Okay. And there is uh, some differences between off-grid and on-grid solar energy. At first, uh, your access to electricity. Electricity access with off-grid solar. If you uh, are not uh, uh, tied to the electric grid and you don't have a generator, you will only have electricity at two points. When the sun is shining and your solar system is producing electricity, when you are pulling electricity previously generated by your solar system from a solar storage device, like batteries. If you do not have batteries or a means to store your energy, you will have less or no electricity when it's cloudy and you will not have electricity at night. With an off-grid system, you will not have access to extra electricity if you need it what you are producing, what you have stored, is all that there to power your equipment. Electricity access with on-grid solar. If your device decides to install an on-grid solar system, you will always have access to electricity, unless uh, the grid goes down. Uh, whether or not your solar system is producing or if you have batteries. If your system is not producing any electricity or not producing enough electricity to power the devices, lights, machine, 
that you are using, you can pull energy from utility grid to supplement it. This ensures you always have enough electricity for what you need. The second uh, difference, what happens to excess production? In off-grid case, depending on the size of the system you install, how much electricity you use, and when you use uh, that electricity, there will likely be times when your system is producing more electricity than you are using. What happens to this excess energy depends on the equipment you install. Most of off-grid solar systems are designed to produce a certain amount of extra electricity in the daytime, which is sent to batteries for storage. The energy stored in those batteries can then be accessed when the system is not producing, like at night or during cloudy weather. Depending on your energy goals, system can be sized to produce enough excess electricity in the daytime to cover your entire energy use around the clock. However, despite even the best and most accurate estimates, the weather is unpredictable. If you experience abnormally cloudy weather several days in a row, the system may not be able to produce enough electricity to change the, charge the batteries and fulfill all your needs. While having extra batteries offer peace of mind and can provide a bank of storage electricity just in case if this happens, they are also expensive. Purchasing more batteries than you need may be cost prohibitive depending on your budget. Uh, in the case of on-grid solar, just like off-grid solar system, many who choose to install an on-grid solar system want to cover 100% or nearly 100% of their energy use again. This can be achieved with the on-grid system as well. Depending on the time of day you use electricity, your solar system can produce excess energy. Instead of sending it to batteries, as you would in an off-grid system, you can send it to the grid and you will be compensated for that electricity. Uh, the third uh, difference, what happens when the grid goes down? Uh, your solar system is working independently from a power grid if you, are, if you have off-grid system. If there is a bad storm or event that knocks out the power, your solar system can continue operating. You won't notice changes in your service or access to electricity. That means you have like a guarantee of any events because you are producing your own electricity. With the home grid systems, by connecting to the grid, you get access to electricity whenever you need it. However, you are also subject to some rules. If you have a grid tight solar system and the grid goes down, you will not have electricity unless you opt for a grid tight solar system with battery backup. And this is why that uh, the shutdown of solar system when the grid goes down is for safety of utility workers who are fixing the power lines. The fourth difference, how you build for electricity. If your uh, system is not tired to a grid, you won't receive an electric bill at all. However, even with no electric bill, off-grid systems are often more expensive because of the additional equipment like batteries that are needed to make it viable. Uh, On-grid system, if you opt for grid-tight system, you could still see a few minimal charges on your electricity bill, even if your solar system provides 100% of your electricity. One type of charge you may continue to see is the service fee or delivery charge. 
This is the cost Leviathan customers from connecting their home or business to the grid. Depending on how much energy your solar system produces and how much energy your home or business uses, your bill could also be below zero. That means you have an ad advanced payment to cover future electricity bills. In my practice, uh, that means, uh, for example, in Estonia, if you produce uh, uh, twice of energy you need, you can cover up all the costs which an electric company asks from you. The best uh, solution in, in solar systems is hybrid solar energy system. A hybrid solar energy system is uh, one that is tied to the grid, but also has a battery bank to store unused electricity. Hybrid system, through more expensive due to the added cost of battery, allow the owners to keep the lights on when the grid goes down and can even help reduce demand charges of businesses. This is a, a very sophisticated system and it's very good but uh, it also had a very, very big minus. And let's see, that is uh, the cost of the system. This, this system costs almost, almost the same price that uh, on-grid system plus uh, off-grid system minus cost of solar panels. So it is, of course, uh, needed in some places where the, you have a grid, but the quality of the grid is bad, but you still need 100% of guarantee that uh, your supplement with electricity is uh, done very well. Okay, why the, there are just, distinct differences between off-grid and grid-tight solar systems. The one that is best for you is dependent on the situation. Off-grid systems allow for complete freedom from the utility, but they are often more ex expensive. Grid-tight systems marry significant electricity savings with grid back dependence, so you'll never have to worry about not having the electricity needed to power your house or business. This, is a, this was a big, uh, big and uh, mm, not very interesting maybe to someone. And now we are going close to the Trianes house. And um, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the basics of creating an effective small house. To using those uh, knowledge I had uh, in creation process of uh, this roundhouse you show in the video, I took many elements to this trianess and uh, one of the most important thing in, in this is uh, integration. Integration means that um, every detail or construction detail performs several functions. For example, we, d we don't uh, build a different ro roof and then put the panels on it, but the roof itself consists from uh, solar panels. And uh, so is uh, smart furniture, for example, which is uh, in, in some uh, models built inside. Uh, the other very important thing is simplicity. If you want to get costs down, you have to build things as simple as possible. In first prototype, we had four, four walls and uh, roof, but uh, every wall costs something. And so we put three walls instead of four and get the same result. Very important thing also is uh, use of space. 
you, uh, we, we thought very, very carefully how to use the space because the space is limited. It's all together like uh, 15 square meters. And uh, it's, yes, possible to make a accommodation there, which consists a little kitchen corner, place to sleep, uh, toilet and shower. And even we can put to the second level one more extra bed. So you can't put the ordinary furniture because it's too small. Uh, that's why, for example, uh, in, in our accommodation unit, uh, our uh, bed, which is uh, quite wide for two persons, turns in day to the sitting area. So in, in use of space, it's very important to use smart furniture. Every corner in the house is used. Inverter, batteries and so on are situated in the low part of the building, which is not usable for living purposes. So uh, many people ask me questions. Yeah, you have a triangular shape and uh, there are very low places. Uh, they are not usable. No, we, we use those places and we put equipment in there. Uh, building materials are also very important because uh, to keep the price low and at the same time we wanted to use uh, uh, like green and the reusable uh, materials and uh, this is wood. Okay, can uh, I with you uh, start this other video? Let's look it and then go, then take a look at Trianes. Yeah, sure. So I'll share my screen now and then uh, I'll show the video. Yes, put this video on the screen. Thank you. So the video. Continuous growth of population and depletion of land suitable for building have caused the need for more compact and efficient ways of living. Of this trend, smart houses are the most innovative solutions. Up to this day, smart houses with basic conveniences have remained a niche due to their high price. If a technical solution is expensive, it is most likely not environmentally friendly. Optimizing space and the number of walls while using sustainable materials, an idea was born to create an affordable active energy house. Trian S is a triangular building that uses solar panels as a roof. To keep the price low, each detail has been given as many uses as possible. The triangle house can be viewed as a small solar farm in which the ground beneath the solar panels is put to use. The building offers an easy way for obtaining extra energy and space, producing more electricity than it can consume. Since the details are prefabricated, construction of this house is simple. Anybody with basic skills has an opportunity to build it for themselves. The solar panels produce around 4.5 to 5 kilowatts, which is enough to cover the power supply of an average home. To reduce the environmental footprint, the building uses a grey water system. Rain and condensed water are gathered to be used as consumption water.
The residential module can be used in many ways for both private and commerce purposes. A summer cottage, accommodation building, or for example, a sauna in the backyard. The industrial module could be used as a tool shed, a cooling room, or an agricultural building. Due to a simple and practical construction, different modules can be merged, creating a larger building with more space and energy production. New modules can also be added later, providing the owner a chance to expand the building step by step. The vertical wall can be used for growing ornamental or climbing plants. Since no foundation or building permit is required, it is possible to place it in a sensitive environment. Thank you, Elvis. Yep. Now you have to share your I screen if you want to see yes, something. Can you see it, my file already? I'm oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Now you have it. Yes, all good now. Okay. Now we talk about this Tyranus. Tranes is a smart house of wide purpose solar electricity production unit. That means that, uh, for example, if we um, have seen solar farms around the country, then the land under the solar panels is unused. But uh, in, in this project, we uh, use the land under the panels and we can say that uh, because of uh, quite expensive construction element of the um, elements of the solar farms if we put it uh, to this house we made those panels it, it makes the same price so actually you get the an energy production and you get an extra house. So the Trianas is low cost and can be equipped with both network and offline connection. Off-grid energy production unit can also be placed in naturally sensitive environment where is no electric connection to the grid. The solution all allows to build house that provides basic necessities of life wherever needed. The project was uh, born on an Estonian island called Hiuma. There was a need to create buildings with a, the smallest possible footprint as Hiuma is a green island and tries to live hand in hand with nature. Generally, the idea is to take use, as I told, space under a solar panels and so we can economize resources of land. Energy capacity is depending on type of panels and max power production is 3.5 till 5 kilowatts and yearly consumption is uh, 3,500 till 5,000 kilowatts hour. And it um, really, with, with development with solar panels, it increases every year. Its triangular shape allows, in addition to the cheap construction cost, to place the solar panels at the right angle. At the same time, solar panels from the roof of, form the roof of the building. The roof configuration also allows rainwater to be collected. The resulting building, its uh, building area, it's altogether four to four meters or 16 square meters but usable space is more than 15, can be used for different purposes. Trianes can produce much more energy than it uses, so it can be used as additional energy unit to existing household. 
there is some pictures uh, how this uh, construction starts and uh, as Latvians who saw the building process can say it uh, takes only like 14 hours to build this house. Construction does not generate waste at the construction site as the building consists mainly of wood and it's prefabricated at the factory. It can also be built on the site according to the drawings. Only hand tools are needed for construction. Building consists of three walls and solar roof. Building is placed to nine blocks and needs no specific basement. Operating costs are low. This is a picture of, um, of the frame of it. It's also possible to combine building units, modular system, if we, uh, we talk about this a little bit uh, later, in different ways, resulting in a larger building. And as we said, the use of the building reduces the ecological footprint due to efficient land use, environmentally friendly electricity generation, and the integration of the materials use. So, there are some different uses. Uh, this model is quite uh, universal. At first, if we replace somewhere empty, empty house, it, it can be used like large, large purpose warehouse. If we put some furniture in it, we can make it arbor or summer house in the own backyard of private house. It can be turned to tool shed. Uh, and uh, most uh, sophisticated model is accommodation for free persons, which is situated for example, in Hiuma, and we used it this summer, and it, it was very popular. It is, and as we saw in this video, the accommodation is with all utilities you need for livings. We can put also sauna in it, and it can be electric sauna because it produces enough electricity. For example, I have um, in this uh, roundhouse and landholder solar house also sauna and it is uh, all equipped uh, by electric. So the, the heat is also electric. And because of uh, free electricity, you can make also cooling room for storage food and vegetables. Uh, one very wide uh, uh, area to use this house is uh, civil defense or military purposes because the building of uh, this house is very quick, as I told. It takes only a little bit more than one day and it will start to produce energy, which is sometimes very important in case of emergency. And uh, also, you can use it wherever you want for additional ele electricity production, wherever and wh whenever it needs. Also, you can uh, build in this uh, way solar farms. As I told, in solar farm, usually the land under the solar panels is not used. But if you make solar farm, you have a very big uh, room, which you can also use in your, in your needs. And uh, the same house, you can use them different electrical solution. That's why we talk a little bit longer about on-grid, off-grid and hybrid systems. So depending on the placing of this house, 
of the possibilities to connect to the creed or the uh, creed itself, you have have to choose the sol electric solution there. I don't speak um, any longer about grid, on grid, off grid, and hybrid system. I did it a little bit before. And of course, because uh, of simplicity, the construction might be situated at different sites. Like in the, in the cities or villages, you can put it in a backyard to get more and extra energy. To be honest, this um, house can be supply all the private house needs. So if you put it uh, to your backyard, you probably get all the energy needs. And your electric bill will be zero or very close to zero. Also, it can be placed in the forest or seaside or other places which is far from greed and far for, from uh, uh, any utilities. And also, uh, you can put it uh, different climatic zones because it uh, makes energy. So, for example, you can put it even to the south places and uh, make their cooling systems. And because electricity doesn't cost any, anything, you can get a free cooled and cooled climate room in different climate zones. And other places where quick construction and electric power is needed. Uh, I took for you, to you some words about modular system. And I have put here some photos. This is a basic, uh, basic model. And you can multiply them different ways. So besides the, the different uh, uses, you can uh, make the, the house a different size. This is uh, the model with extra, extra roof. Here is uh, put two models together, for example, and you already get, uh, instead of uh, 15 square meters, this makes 30 square meters. Let's look from the other side, which is like uh, a little house already for living purposes. And the good things here is that uh, you can uh, wide it step by step. If you buy one model, you have electricity and all the utilities you need. And when it needs, you can add extra space step by step. This is a, a configuration which you can use if you want, uh, for example, make a solar farms. You can multiply those uh, modulus as much you want. The roof must be directed to the south and you can use the room which is under the solar panels. And it uh, takes the same space. If you, if you use the uh, uh, land under the solar panels or not. This one is my favorite. It consists uh, of three different models. And uh, you have nice corner here where wind doesn't blow and it's already almost 50 square meters big house, which is fair and enough for two or even three people living. This is a different angle of this.
Here is uh, used four modules already, which makes it more than 60 square meters. And it gets also at least twice of energy we talked about before. Because uh, there is no point to put panels uh, to, to north direction, but if you put them only to south direction, you give, get up to 10 kilowatts of energy, which is allows even use electric heating everywhere all the year round. But everything we have, we can make it even better. In this uh, Trian-S model, we use it in, in HEO-MAS uh, prototype. You can uh, use also the, the one vertical wall we have there. And uh, if we want to use it, we can put, for example, living facade or flower beds. There is uh, some uh, drawings how to put them. The green one is living facade and the black one, they are here, those flower beds, or you can put some strawberries or, or even potatoes and raise them. So then you have uh, used every detail of this house. It's, it's uh, all about integration, we talked a little bit before. Uh, the other thing is uh, sustainable use of water. And the roof, instead of, uh, and in addition of uh, solar panels roof, it, it covers all the, all the rainwater which uh, flows to the roof. And you can gather it. This is a simplified photo, but uh, you can uh, put the bump in this uh, tank and uh, then you can make your own uh, water system with gathered uh, rainwater. because uh, the roof has here corners and uh, every drop which uh, comes to this roof can be used and gathered. If you put your house, for example, in the place where is no water supply and no well, so you have already two very important things. You have electricity, and you have water. Okay, you have so-called gray water, which you can't, can't probably drink, but drinking water you can carry on with you because uh, drinking water you need a very few, but uh, for other purposes you can use this gathered water you get from the rain. Uh, some words about uh, indoor climate. Uh, this is very small house and uh, that's why to getting warm or getting cool, it's, uh, it needs very few energy. For example, in Hiuma, in this accommodation place, we use uh, 700 watts of uh, heater and it takes about uh, 50 or 20 minutes in the outside temperature of zero to get warm inside. And that's why this is uh, not uh, costs very much to heat, up, heat it up or, or cool it down in the, in the summertime. In the climate, you can also change uh, with ventilation system, but uh, uh, we don't still use any because uh, there are some windows which be, can be opened 
and and uh, I think it's basically all you need. And of course, very important thing is uh, automation to um, rule all the systems there, and you can put like a IT brain there, which is uh, controls all the systems, starting from the opening the window, which we saw in the first video. Uh, it controls heating or cooling, and you can um, also control it, use a remote control. And this is basically all. Thank you very much, and uh, I am ready to answer your questions. If you have uh, further questions and uh, want to contact me, so there are my contacts. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, Thomas. Um, yeah, it was a very nice uh, presentation. Thank you. And uh, probably there are some questions in a room. So uh, Raius could organize that people can open their microphones to ask questions. Uh, yeah, I, th I think that everyone should be able to unmute themselves, ask a question, and then mute when you're not speaking. There is a question, what uh, type, uh, what other mat materials are used besides wood? Yes, uh, as I told you, the, this is a wooden house. Yes, uh, we use some uh, glass for windows and uh, we use some uh, tin for making uh, a roof waterproof. But it's basically all. Instead of solar panels, of course, they are made of carbon. Um, and th then we have a question from the chat. Um, can your approach of mounting, mounting solar panels be used to mount panels on existing roofs when changing the roof material? Can you repeat, please? Um, can can your approach of mounting solar panels be used to mount solar panels on existing roofs when changing the roofing material? Or basically, how are you attaching the solar panels to the roof? Simply screwing them or, or is it some standard uh, fittings or something? Yes, uh, there is actually two ways. There is a, a standard system which is a little bit more expensive, but uh, we, we just uh, screw them to the roof, but we put under the roof some uh, wooden materials because the uh, air can be flow and cool the panels down because uh, the, the panels get more energy when they are, you know, the temperature of panels are low. So in the winter time, for example, when, when the sun comes out, the produce of energy is uh, bigger than in summertime when outside temperature is higher. So yes, uh, we, we uh, took care of the, the uh, cooling of those panels, but to use uh, almost ordinary screws, we made up our own system. Thank you. So there's another question. Is there a possibility to put in the Trian S house an oven heated with uh, wood? Yes, it's possible. Uh, we just, uh, uh, for, uh, after a few days, put one uh, more Trian S to Hiyuma and uh, yes, we, we make a fireplace in it. Mm -hmm. 
Um, my relatives are considering building um, a basement to store stuff for the winter. And now I'm thinking maybe it's a good idea to build this house, use some simple air conditioner or refrigerator or something and, and not, not dig stuff. And, and like, can you maybe tell a bit more about options to, to make this uh, a basement or refrigerated cold room? Yes, it uh, it depends uh, what uh, what you want to achieve, and I think uh, even uh, it could be more easy and more cheap to build it on the ground uh, instead to dig it in the ground. So, um, if you want to make a cooling room from Tyanes, you just put it on the place and must be insulated inside and then you have to put the cooling equipment and it's done. Maybe in some places it's very, very difficult to, to dig. In some places you can't dig at all. So then uh, it's the only option. But uh, if you have two options, to dig or not to dig, you just can uh, calculate which is more easy and more cheap. And and what sort of how, how would you refrigerate it? Like air conditioning or or, or what, what? Yeah, there is two ways. Uh, one is uh, if you want just to little bit cool down, you can use air, air condition, which we know how it works. And the other is uh, to use fridge ep equipment, which is uh, used in, uh, in the industrial refrigerators, which is also very common uh, techniques and uh, widely used. Okay, thanks for that. Um, and then people are asking in the chat um, a bit about prices. Uh, like, um, can you talk a bit about um, price ranges for, for, for this system and, and maybe uh, some details on, 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 on specifics, how the price of what the price consists, like how much is panels, how much is battery, how much is the, is the house itself and maybe what are options there? Okay. Um, the rates are basically so that uh, the house itself starts like from 7,500 euros. And for this money, you get the house in the place and the energy production, and it's uh, all finished outside. And it's empty room without insulation inside. And the, the floor is already insulated because it's very difficult to to make the insulation um, after. And uh, this is uh, meant to people who can uh, make the inside work by themselves. It, uh, it's ready outside. And uh, the 7,500 plus uh, transportation. If, uh, for example, to, to put it to Latvia and and if some, if there is some people who are interested, and we can put like, like uh, two or three or five together, it uh, makes only, only like one hundred euros per house, additional for transport. Now, if you want, to, ah, this is uh, with the price with um, uh, on grid inverter. If you want off grid system. With batteries, that means extra cost because the off grid uh, inverter is uh, twice as uh, twice more expensive than on grid inverter, and uh, you you need some batteries. Then the price is uh, if it's off grid solution starts like uh, ten thousand and five hundred euros because the batteries itself you need. A, at least four batteries for 200 ampere hour each 
and one one battery costs about 500 euros so only the batteries adds to the price 2000 euros if you need a full equipped house with the smart furniture with the kitchen uh, living area shower toilet it's about 14100 14,000, sorry. That's the rates. But I think uh, most uh, usable at first place is the is the 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 cheapest one, which which I told starts from 7,500, and then you can decide what to put inside or what to do further on with this room. And those two, two houses we built in, uh, in Smiltene and to Liepaja or Pape, and they are also empty rooms. I know that in Pape they use it uh, in the future to information house for this uh, nature protection area. And I don't know which will be used, the Smiltene house, maybe Liga can can tell about more. Okay, Liga, will you comment on what you are going to use your house for? Uh, we will see in the future. Right now it's uh, only like a prototype for people to see it, uh, how it looks in a nature. So, no, so you're I open for ideas, maybe sauna and, and uh, maybe refrigerator or um, maybe something else. Yeah, we will see. Okay, um, then we have a question um, about, um, uh, so what, in your opinion, is the distance from existing power lines uh, when this, uh, uh, when, when, when going off grid uh, is cheaper than being on grid? Yes, the border line is very simple. If it's more, uh, more expensive to, to build the electric line and to connect with the, with the electric company, it obviously will be nice to have a cheaper option uh, like off-grid. And then you get the uh, advantage that you are independent to any grid or any officials. But as, as you saw, the price difference is also remarkable. But uh, I, I talked to you uh, in previously about those Estonian conditions when, when the line costs, line only costs 80,000, which is very big sum. And if you get the house like 10,000, it's uh, probably best decision to get. I don't know how it's uh, exactly in Latvia, but uh, I think it's generally the same that if you don't have any, any greed or any agreement to connect to the greed, you have to pay some fees, which sometimes uh, could be very, very high. And then of course, it's reasonable to build this soft grid solution. Yeah, I guess I would add that uh, most likely, um, if we're talking about situation where there is grid, like some village or, or maybe some old house in, in, in countryside that has Soviet time electricity, most likely for those situations, you can consider grid tie system. But if you're building something somewhere where there is no electricity, then the to get grid to some remote place it will get expensive very quickly um, and then um, then you have to calculate how much space you need and, and uh, how much how big the system has to be because if you are there at that building mostly in summer like a summer cottage maybe you maybe you don't need that big batteries um, if you are uh, willing to buy and have diesel generator for evenings, um, maybe again, you don't need that much batteries. So it will, it will be very, very different from case to case. And, and um, like 
you need to calculate on on on, on what's relevant for you. Yes, of course. Uh, th this example which I made for those batteries, it's like average, in average use. If you, yes, you, you, it's not your permanent house, but it's most likely a summer cottage. It, it would be enough to power your needs. Maybe if you want to live there all the year long, you need some extra batteries. But uh, I don't know. Ah, one good point to build, of course, uh, off-grid solution, if we compare it to the on-grid, is that if you made your expenses, uh, your uh, further use of electricity is free of charge, which is also very important. One point is that uh, if, if the uh, building of the grid is very expensive, there is no point to build it. But the other advantage is that if you already built it, I mean off-grid solution, then uh, you, you can uh, be very independent. Yeah, exactly. So um, now we have a question again about batteries. Um, what is the average battery lifespan? And then also um, the next question is what brand components uh, you use for off-grid solutions? Yes. Um, the solar panels life, lifetime demands and standards says that uh, after 25 of year, years, uh, at least 80% of energy production must be there. Yeah, so batteries are not lasting so long and uh, the producers uh, promise uh, about uh, 10 years. In my practice, as uh, I use my solar house more than 11 years, is that, yes, uh, uh, some batteries last uh, much longer and some are not. Because in, in my solar house, uh, which is uh, was built uh, also like off-grid system, I used uh, much more batteries. I used uh, 24 batteries. The, the same batteries practically, which I recommend to use in, in uh, Trianes, but only four of them, four, four pieces. I had 24, so I can, I could monitor uh, the lifetime of those batteries very, very good way. Uh, so yes, uh, if panels last at least 25 years and they are not very expensive, then uh, batteries last like 10 or 12 years, depending on, on use, and they are more expensive. Uh, if we talk about uh, companies, then my experience is uh, that uh, I suggest to use if it's possible, most, most cheap batteries which you can obtain. And of course, uh, cheap batteries are made in China. Uh, no matter what, uh, what company batteries they are. Um, we used in this uh, round solar house, like no name solar batteries, which costs like 250 euros per unit. Now we use, uh, let me think which the company was. Uh, anyway, it's a, it's a known com battery company. And uh, th they are produced in China also, but they cost twice more, but uh, they do the same work. If you want, you can obtain even like uh, very, very, very um, sophisticated battery packs from Tesla, for example. But those uh, prices starts like ten thousand euros. They they cost more than all the 
rest of the house. So I don't know. In this stage of development of batteries, uh, I suggest to use those those ordinary acid batteries, and they they functioning very well, in my opinion. Okay. Um, and then we have a question about um, insulation materials. Uh, what what insulation materials do you recommend? And and then next question is uh, if this is off grid solution, then how many hours per year uh, does it need to be in the sun? Okay. So insulation, and then how much sun do we need? Mm -hmm. The insulation materials we use are uh, those ordinary materials you usually build your own house. If you do the, the today's wooden house, you put their usual <laughs> rock wool or whatever you use. Because I, I say, say it again, this is very, very little capacity of the house. It, it's not 100 square meters, it's not 200 square meters, it's like 50 square meter house. And uh, there is no point to put too much insulation because then you pay money for the ins insulation. Instead of that, I recommend to pay money for the solar panels. It's like philosophical questions. Uh, if you build a house with solar panels, how much to spend money to solar panels and how much to spend money to insulation. If uh, electricity doesn't cost anything, the insulation shouldn't be so big and expensive. The modern uh, passive houses, they have very, very big walls and very, very much of insulation. And what happens is that they keep very good uh, uh, temperature, but uh, there is one thing which is missing. You can't live in it because you haven't enough air. And then you have to make some holes in your wall and let all the temperature out. So this is called ventilation. And <laughs> to avoid those problems, maybe it's better to make like 10% more energy and uh, you don't have to put so much insulation. I would add to this. That the other question was uh, about the sun. Um, I don't uh, know exact uh, numbers uh, for Latvia, but I think it's better than in Estonia because Latvia is more south comparing to Estonia. But I know that, uh, for example, in Estonia, if you put the house without the shadows, it uh, the sun gives you, in the best way, 87% energy you need online. I mean, this time when you need it. As, you, as we know, in summertime, we have plenty of uh, sunlight and uh, it's even more you need. It's, it's many times more you need. But uh, in winter time, especially in November and December, it's like today, the sun is uh, not very shiny, and you you could move, you could need extra energy. But in ideal way, the sun gives you when you need eighty seven percent of energy. So if you, you even took it from the generator, you're missing only 13% of uh, energy, which is not very much. As you know, ideal situations usually not exist, but then I can say that at 80% of energy, you can 
easily can get from the sun when you need it, and 20% are, are missing. If you can uh, uh, sell the energy back, you can produce twice of more energy, energy when you were what you need. So in, in summertime, it's no problem to, to produce uh, 10 times more energy than you need. And if you sell it, for example, back to electric company, then you can uh, uh, use this uh, energy because it's like prepaid. Uh, you can use it in winter time when it, uh, it's not so good, uh, the situation. But in off grid situation, you can produce uh, eight, like eighty percent from sun. Okay, and uh, adding to the question or answer about the ventilation, um, I know that there are um, devices that are called heat recovery ventilators or recuperators uh, that can exchange uh, air and retain as much uh, heat as possible. But again, those cost money and those add to the price uh, of, of the whole building. So it will, it will lar largely depend on, on what the use case is um, to decide if you need such a device or maybe you need thicker walls or maybe not that thick walls and just a bit more heating. So it's very dependent on, on situation that you will need. Yes. And uh, this is my favorite question about this um, uh, recovery system. Uh, and uh, producers and manufacturers of those ventilation systems, they claim that uh, they can even uh, recover 80% of energy, which sounds very good. Uh, but uh, nobody reads the, the little letters under the explanation. Do you, Ravis, uh, know? In, in what uh, temperature it's valid, this 80%? I, I am here to hear from expert. I've on, only heard the... Uh, I'm the expert on ventilation, but I just noticed that uh, this 80% of, of recovery is uh, on, the, on, uh, out, on the outside temperature of 15 degrees, plus 15 degrees. I think if the outside temperature is minus, 15 degrees, the recovery is under 10%. Okay, good. So, so um, I'm not very, very hard supporter of uh, such kind of systems. I think uh, in big buildings, they are necessary, but in this kind of building, uh, yeah, if you consider the price and the use of uh, equipment, which is also need uh, uh, maintenance, I don't know. I don't recommend, but it's uh, up to every house owner. That's a very good comment, thank you. So any more questions or comments maybe from the audience now? Uh, I would like to inform uh, all participants that in chat room, uh, Ilse shared one document uh, about uh, there is a PDF file about parallel off-grid system. In case if you have like not enough sun energy, you can use the grid energy. So you can uh, download this file. And another thing what I want to inform all participants is that you can uh, like come, come to the WhatsApp group with a link uh, for those who are not in this WhatsApp group. Um, and this is a place in WhatsApp where about 100 people are sharing these experiences uh, with uh, alternative energy. So you are welcome to use the link and be a part of this group. Yeah, and, and we got, uh, yeah, so come to the WhatsApp group. Um, and we got another question. So how would you heat those houses with underfloor heating or with some regular heater? 
Uh, yeah, uh, there is of course uh, many possibilities, but uh, I can see here two uh, easy way to heat it up. One is just to put the uh, electric heater inside. And it seems uh, it seems too easy to be true, but really, as I told about my accommodation, it takes 15 minutes if you put the electric radiator inside, like, I don't know, 700, 800 watts, and it's 15 minutes and it's done. Uh, if you want to stay maybe longer in the winter time and uh, it seems that uh, the electricity you get is not enough. You can make a little fireplace in it, which is also okay. Uh, and uh, you can't imagine how, how quickly it is possible to warm it up, this, uh, this house. It's, it's really quick. So, uh, yes, you can put the uh, underfloor mm, heating also but it costs money, as we plan to make a uh, house as cheap as possible, uh, then it's probably not an option. Yeah, and then another question, how much space does the one module take, like on the ground? What was the square footage that you need for it? Yeah, it, uh, it's four to four meters. It means that it's all together 16 square meters. It's very, very simple shape. This, what's, uh, as the name says, it's a triangle and it's four to four meters and it's four meters high also. Okay. Um, and then we have a question about um, the insulation in, in the floor, like how much insulation is needed in the floor and how much do you put in it? And what is that? We make uh, this insulation uh, uh, 15 centimeters and we put just drop wool to the ground. And in my opinion, it's uh, enough. I have big, big discussion uh, sometimes some years ago with the Estonian uh, government uh, officials about those insulations themes. And I know that, that uh, there are very strict uh, uh, regulations how big this insulation must be. But uh, in those regulations, nobody calculate that uh, energy doesn't cost. You don't have to. Uh, consider energy cost because your energy will be free. And this house, particularly, it produces much, much more energy than, than it consumes. So there is no point to make uh, uh, too big insulation works. It just rises the cost of the house and uh, makes the climate inside worse. But uh, didn't get any any special effect. Okay, um, and then we have a question about uh, recycling or utilization of old uh, batteries. Uh, how easy it is to utilize them in in an um, environmentally friendly manner? Yeah, uh, I have done it already because I told you that some batteries didn't last more than ten years. Uh, I don't know the company name in Latvia, but in Estonia is uh, companies who gathering old metal and you just get them there and they deal with them. They have uh, the system how to recycle batteries, but uh, I don't have to do deal with it because it's it's late job and it's well so we entrust our batteries to the professionals yes right okay so more questions it's it this might be the last time there, you get... there was a uh, Ravis, there was another question uh, there was uh, how how much square meters is the building place of the house of this model 16 yeah 
And another thing, if I understood right, Diana's question is that is it possible to uh, use like a heating system in a floor? No, no, it's, we it's... already answered these. <laughs> ah, okay. Then okay. the last one question is uh, about uh, cleaning solar panels. Mm -hmm. Is it needed and how? <laughs> Yes, it's a good question. Um, uh, because, uh, as I told, every uh, thing which uh, covers those panels decreases the energy production. As, as well, like shadows are not very welcome to shadows of the trees and so on. So dust on the panels decreases uh, the production. But uh, in practical, if you have enough rain in the summer, then the panels are in this angle that uh, the rain washes the panels. And you don't have to, most, most of the time, I think you don't have to clean them. It could happen in, in, for example, springtime when the trees and flowers, uh, they have uh, many dust from the, I don't know the word in English. <laughs> um, then, then they can cover with dust your panels and maybe temporarily you, you need to wash them like Blowing water, but but no special uh, cleaning. Nobody does. And I will add to this uh, an advice that we got in in another seminar from solar panel expert, and it said that if you want to wash those panels, you should never wash them during the sun because those panels heat up, and if you put cold cold water on them, they can get damaged. So you sh if 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 you for some reason decide to clean them, then clean them in the evening when it's maybe in, in some shady day, uh, but be careful not to clean them, like not to put cold water on hot panels. And maybe, I, I think you can skip cleaning at all. Like panels will be fine and the house will most likely produce enough energy uh, even with some dust on it. Right, because, uh... In, in different reasons, you uh, lo lost uh, some some few percents of uh, energy anyway. Is there any shadow or I don't know? Is there any dust can be uh, any time, and and two or three percents of uh, the maximum energy you lost anyway. So I I think it's not so critical and it. Uh, you have to work to wash them, so it's usually it's not needed at all. Yeah, and if, if your batteries, let's say, are full and you don't use that energy, then there is no point in, in cleaning the panels to get even more energy that you are not using. Exactly. Um, so then we have a question, is it possible to buy uh, some schematics for the house and make it um, ourselves? Uh, I think it's principally possible, but I can ensure that uh, if you want to build it by yourself, you, practically your, your material will be cost the same price. It seems uh, maybe oh, why I to have to pay to have other country guys to build it up, but uh, we, you, I can ensure we really worked about this uh, and uh, we find the, the best way to make them and if you go to shop and buy the material and want to build it, it, it wouldn't be so nice and it wouldn't be, be much more cheaper. But it, well, yes. And, and, and labor that you put into this to, to set up like everything except your pre-production, like I guess the labor is not that much. And if someone does the building themselves, then they kind of need to calculate their labor as well. And in the end, most likely will not be much cheaper. Yes, because the question is uh, where 
Okay, the, the wood in the shop uh, will cost uh, basically the same price, but uh, if you want to build up the solar system, uh, there is uh, uh, many, many places where you can get them, but uh, if you are not very aware about uh, the system and don't know the things, and usually um, the price will be get much, much more higher because we get this system uh, directly from the factory, which is uh, makes panels in Estonia. And also we get uh, those inverters and other equipment uh, almost in factory price. So I don't think that, uh, that if you want to get those uh, electrical components somewhere else, you get a better price. Okay, and then, then there's a question about birds. Uh, there is a property with a lot of birds. Um, do they interfere with the panels or, or like, is there some special consideration people need to take uh, when, when they have a lot of birds on the property? No. The only thing is uh, <laughs> that uh, the birds left something sometimes when they fly over the panels and maybe you just have to clean it sometimes if they have done this very much. I don't want to say out this word <laughs> in English, but uh, otherwise no, because uh, this uh, prototype uh, we have in Hiuma, it's also in uh, nature protected area and there are, it's in the seaside and uh, there are many, many birds and um, I don't see any problem of, uh, of, of the birds or I don't know, no, no. Okay, and then uh, maybe you can repeat once more what the 7,500 euros gets you. Like the question here is, is this price including the setup of the building or is it just for the, uh, for the materials that you need to set up yourself? Um, in this price, you have all this house on the place. You don't have to do uh, nothing more than you have to prepare the, the land. It, it must be stable and th that's all. And you have to make the contract with the electric company when you choose the um, on-grid solution, but we come and build this house for you. So we just uh, give you the keys and you can live in it. Uh, when you put in some something inside, like you get empty building from the inside, uh, but you can live in it, like put a mattress on the floor or chair yeah, or something, yeah, and you can yeah. use it. You can do the further work, you can order uh, inside uh, things from us, or you just can put your mattress inside, you have electricity, and you can go to the internet if you have net there. And you can put heaters, you can put light in it, and that's all. Mm. I don't know how many people are from uh, Smiltele or, uh, or this Pape uh, region. Maybe, yeah, maybe I can introduce the, this, this prototype we built to, to Smiltene and uh, everybody can try to... It, it, it's, of course, far away from Smiltene to... to Liepa and see this uh, nature protected area in Pape and, and can easily go and see this house. It's, it's uh, totally finished outside and all the work is included to this price. So the house is uh, uh, finished outside. This produces energy. It has inverter and uh, all the needs to to make energy and the price is including all the taxes or taxes have to be calculated in addition um, now the prices includes uh, taxes because uh, there are 
we can make first years so that in Estonia we don't have this capital gain tax, which, which is normally 20%. And that's why we can make it to a private person without additional fees. And Liga can ensure that uh, the price is final and uh, there, there wasn't any, any additional fees. Yes, okay. it is true. Uh, what I want, wanted to add is uh, there was a question about, um, uh, is it true that people can see those houses? Yes, you are welcome to see those. Uh, two places in Pape and in the Smiltanes uh, region. Uh, I will put there in the chat room uh, two mobile phone numbers. You can phone those people and, uh, and find out which time you can uh, visit the place for those who want to see this in nature. Can you, Liga, maybe can um, show those photos and you did one video? in the building process in, in Smiltene, then we can see what we did there exactly and what uh, it will look like. Mm -hmm. uh, it will yes. be exactly uh, the same. Mm -hmm. uh, I will share uh, share these links. I can, I can also share this in this chat room, but uh, anyway, I have a plan to write an email after this webinar uh, because I hope all of the participants in this uh, room ha uh, have uh, registered, and so I have your email address. And in this email, I will uh, will put um, uh, the link to the videos and uh, or photos. And there will also be a link to this video so that you can share with your friends. Yes. And if you have possibilities, you can share this uh, Trianes video address uh, also. I posted those uh, video addresses to the chat already. Uh, oh, okay. We had also a question, what sort of uh, um, foundations are needed? Like you said that no foundations is needed, but like, I guess Liga did something like some leveling of the ground, like something, or you, or you put your house on yes. the ground. Yes, as I told, uh, the ground uh, must be prepared, which means that uh, the ground must be stable and level it. And uh, yes, there is no need to special uh, basement or fundament. We put this uh, house to the nine blocks, which can be, for example, uh, Mr. What's the name of the what rock it? Fibo blocks or, or, or yeah, blocks? Yeah, Fibo blocks will be nice or I rock or they cost like uh, two or three euros per unit and and that's all. For example, in Liepaja, they uh, went different way. They put this, uh, they wanted us to build this house uh, <laughs> to, the, to the big hole. So they did a wooden frame under the house and we put the house there but the simplest way is to level the ground and put the nine blocks and it will be nice yes so these are pictures from Liepai, so you can see yes. and th this red, red one is the frame under under this house which Liepai guys did and you see there is a, even one uh, one corner is in the ear, so it's like... Yes, because uh, this hole uh, is uh, filled by water in, in uh, springtime and they wanted to show it. That's why they put it uh, to this uh, place. But th then there is question about um, the ground moving and, and um, settling or, or like doesn't doesn't the foundation somehow deteriorate or, or, or doesn't something happen with it uh, during the life of the house? Uh, the house doesn't wait very much. The weight is not very high. And as I told, the, the ground must be stable. It just has to be stable. You can't put it some places 
where the crowd moves too much. But uh, it's not so critical. It's, uh, it's uh, still a little house and uh, it's uh, quite solid itself. So a little moving doesn't uh, affect. And then question mostly, I guess, to Liga, do you need some sort of um, permits or, or something for, for this or, or due to the small square footage, you don't need any permits from government for this house? Uh, yes, uh, in Bulbald, uh, I write in uh, this Bonetics um, Informatics System uh, by myself. Uh, I'll get from them allowance, and it's called in Latvian atlauja būvis novietošanai. And now, when when uh, all permission will be uh, will be done with uh, electricity company, suddenly stickly. Right now, this process is still uh, going on. Then uh, we will like, get like final um, document that it's done, and. So yes. So, so the, there the, is no... the the permit to place the building, you register yourself that you are placing some building, or or does or is there some inspection or something? No, no, no. I did it by myself. Uh, it's basically, you you are you're, you're it's saying small to... building, and you can do this by yourself. You don't need architect or any and, uh, and other people who do this for that. You only use uh, this uh, this system. It's uh, you. Should all you know, tell you, yeah, out of the yeah, out of the if they said, uh, Latvia, LV. So, but it's possible for those who need uh, some support. You can write me or call me. Uh, you have my, my telephone number now about these allowances. If you, I can tell how we did it in Smilton. Yeah, and, and for the for the grid tie electricity part, um, so. To register your grid tie system with uh, with with government, um, you need step number one. You need to write to Sadelstikli that you will have um, you will use one of the inverters that is uh, from the list that is approved to be used in Latvia. Uh, so you can use only certain inverters in Latvia. You cannot choose any inverter that you want if you want to connect your system to the grid. Um, and then you write uh, yes negums um, to the Sadelstikl that you will use this inverter uh, and you specify what sort of inverter it is, uh, what's the power of it, and then they provide to you um, a paper that you give to the electrician. Uh, and the second step is that you need certified electrician to approve um, your installation and he signs um, with, with, uh, with, with his signature and attaches his, sign uh, his uh, certificate um, that this installation was done correctly. Um, and yes, we will have recording for this. Um, so yeah, so to, to register the system with the government, basically you fill a form that you want this system and then uh, you need the help of certified electrician. And, you need certified electrician, not some electrician. Um, and it's not that easy to get certified electricians and they are quite busy. Um, and it will cost you something for, for the certified electrician to approve your uh, installation. But again, it's, it's, it's not that difficult. I can ensure that to, uh, you said the first step is to find the right inverter from the list. Uh, we did it already. And we use only inverters which are approved also by by Latvian uh, electric company. So <laughs> you don't need to go through the first step. I can ensure that our inverters are already approved by Latvian uh, electric company. Yeah, but uh, so so uh, so the first step will be where you submit form to the Latvian electric company that you are using this uh, inverter uh, and. That inverter will be from the approved list uh, if you buy uh, this house from from Tonis, uh, and yeah. then yeah. So you you say to the company that you will use this, and then the second step is uh, you submit to them 
um, a form that has been signed by a certified electrician. Mm -hmm. And if you uh, be, uh, decide to build off-grid uh, this time, of course, then you don't need uh, any permission from uh, permission from electric companies. You just have to ensure that you can uh, build this uh, to a certain place. And again, Tonis will get you. Oh, yeah. In Estonia, you don't need any permission to build a, a little house uh, which is under 20 square meters. So this kind of uh, building you can put, uh, for example, in Estonia everywhere and you don't know, you don't need any permission. Yes, so it seems um, now we are ready with questions. Thank you very much for everybody who was participating in this nice webinar. Thank you very much, Tonis. It was great. Thank you. Thank you, Liga. Thank you, Rivis. Thank you, everybody who uh, listened to us uh, these this two hours. And I hope it was useful for you. And if, if uh, there is any questions or requests for me, please don't hesitate. and you can write me or call to those numbers or mail address which I gave. And mm -hmm. from me, I would say that thank you for being here. Thank you for having this seminar. And uh, if this topic interests you, join the WhatsApp group. Um, some new developments might appear there and cool, cool stuff shows up there. Not much spam, not much uh, messages, only the important stuff when it is there. Mm -hmm. And another very important uh, information is that uh, in the end of this year, uh, the project will open uh, one platform in which we will collect all descriptions of the prototypes uh, which was created in this uh, project. Uh, and we will also uh, um, give for uh, free for use uh, PDF book uh, where also those prototypes are described. And so please stay with us in touch. Um, go to the connect to this WhatsApp group and inform us in email uh, or somehow contact us to be uh, well informed about all uh, news in the project. Thank you for being with us and have a nice weekend. Have a nice weekend. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.